Um, so quickly, I'll just kind of do kind of a, a recap um, of some of the like terms. So risk in insurance is actually de- defined as the potential for loss. And there's two types of risk. Um, there's a speculative risk, uh, which is the potential for gain or loss. So think of gambling, um, technically investing can also be speculative risk, um, especially with like meme stocks and things like that. Um, pure risk is a potential for only loss. So a pure risk, for example, would be like death or dying. And pure risk are the only ones that can be covered via insurance. Um, So for example, another pure uh, risk would be when you think of like home insurance, like your house being damaged, car insurance, your house, uh, the car being damaged. Um, All of those are pure risk. Um, And then one big thing too about insurance. Um, So not just life insurance, but any type of insurance. The whole point of insurance is to transfer risk from the insured to the insured. So when you purchase home insurance, life insurance, life insurance, I mean, home insurance, car insurance, life insurance, what you're doing is paying the insurer money to take on the risk of a loss. So that sums up kind of risk and I hope people kind of get a better idea now of what risk is for and the whole purpose of kind of insurance and not just life insurance. Uh, but some big things to kind of go back over as far as picking um, the type of risk you can have when you want to set up a policy or have life insurance in general. Uh, one of the big ones is picking the wrong company. Um, so to kind of just go back to what Rashida was just talking about, uh, we've talked about it multiple times. You got to make sure if you're doing infinite banking that it's a mutual company and not a stock company. And the big difference for that, just to explain for people who don't know, with mutual companies, um, you are a policy owner. So you get dividends from the the company, opposed to if it's a stock company, it's the shareholders who get the dividends and not the policy holders. Um, You also wanna have a Comdex score above 85. Um, That's kind of mine. Um, I think Jeff was saying above 82. Um, but anywhere around there, um, most of the companies that you see are going to be in the 90s or above um, anyway. So I kind of think of it when you, the Comdex score for just to explain it for people. And I'll actually go find the link on Investopedia and post it. Um, what it does is it takes the average of all the different scores that are out there. For, so there's like an S&P score, there's a Moody's and there's all these different credit scores. And it takes the average of them. Uh, so think of kind of like when you when you're in school and you take, you know, in a semester you might have four or five different tests, but then at the end you get the average of all those tests, and then you get the final exam, and, that's your, and then you get your final grade. So the Comdex is like the final score of the insurance carriers, and the scores go from like zero to one hundred. So also think of it too of kind of like in school, if you wanted that A, then you want an A company. You don't want a C company. Um, Other things that you can do wrong are setting up the policy wrong. Um, And this is a big one uh, because I know plenty of people and there's plenty of stories of people who got a policy and it wasn't what they thought it was. And they got a policy, for example, uh, to do cash flow banking or infinite banking concept and there was no cash value. So one way that you avoid that will be, um, actually I'll talk about next slide. So one big thing about setting up policy wrong is there's something called the seven pay rule. And what that means is you cannot pay the policy in full in the first seven years. If you do, it becomes MEC, which is a modified endowment contract. And what that means is you lose the tax advantages of having the tax-free growth and the tax-free withdrawals and distributions of a life insurance policy. And now it is all, everything is taxed as capital gains. So you want to avoid that at all costs. Oh, Jeff. Okay, I did. It says, should that say, it says, should that say Comdex under 85 or should it be above 85? Below, below, I'm sorry. Yeah, below or above? Uh, That was a question in the chat. Yeah. Did I put that wrong? Because <laughs> I did retype these. <laughs> Where it says Comdex score above 85, should it say above or should it say below 85? 
Oh, it should definitely be above 85. All right. That's what I was thinking because it's based on the percentile. Like everybody below that would be, you know, a lower ranking. Above 85 would be a higher ranking. And you and you can just Google like whatever the company's name, Com- Comdex score, or you can just Google Comdex score for like life insurance companies. And there's plenty of people who have a list out there. And they'll show you like the top 50 rated Comdex companies. Yeah, I actually found a list. Um, it was a whole PDF um, from somebody's website, but I think they were an annuity um, company. So, but... So yeah, you can Google it. Yep. Um, so the other things you can do as far as risk is mismanage the policy. So we've mentioned multiple times as far as lapsing. Um, basically what that is, is when you don't make the premium payments. Now, one good thing about life insurance policies is you can get them reinstated. But there is a process to go through and you have to technically reapply to get reinstated. So you have to prove that you still are insurable, which is one of the risks, because now if you have a health condition, they're not going to reinstate that policy. Um, And then the other one is taking too many loans. So on that one, just so you understand. So when you let me explain this correctly, so. A lot of the one misconception is about the whole taking out. You can you put the money in, you can keep taking it out. You can, but you don't get to take out a hundred percent. There's it depends on the what companies you have. Normally it's about 90 to 95 percent of the cash value that you can actually loan out. Um, so that's one thing that most people don't share. Um, the other fact is if you take out too many loans. And you have, um, I forget the technical name, but basically if you take out so many loans where now your interest and everything is more than your cash value, you actually end up defaulting on the policy because now you've you've taken out so much value from the policy and you don't have any value. Um, It's kind of like, I guess the way I'll say it it's similar to is, let's say you took out like a HELOC on your house and the property value went down. It's a very similar situation. Almost like you're upside down on the particular yep. investment. And so you're gonna you will lapse if if you do that. So you have to make sure you're aware of your um and I added that one in I added that one in there. Sorry. Oh no, you good. <laughs> <laughs> it threw but, me off a little bit, but we know, good. it's one of those ways when you know, hey, you turn in that car, it's still you still owe a lot on it. And you don't get, you know, what what you need from the policy. So they're going to add that lump. But you basically upside down and, and now it's a bad investment. 